I'll be reading an article titled, How Much of a Risk? The Past, Present, and Future of Reduced Instruction Set Computers by Philip Robinson. They say laboratory experiments have proved that lean chips with reduced instruction sets can run benchmark tests at fantastic speeds, but some system designers remain unconvinced that risk will be as useful in the real world of complex systems and applications. Both RISC and its predecessor, CISC, are commonly credited to IBM. The first CISC machine was probably the IBM 360 mainframe, which was created in 1964. The 360 made extensive use of microprogramming, building instructions out of series of microinstructions that were in turn stored in ROM within the CPU. Decoding an instruction into a sequence of micro-instructions requires several lookup operations and therefore multiple clock cycles. Engineers understood the additional clock cycles to be a natural consequence of putting more hardware functions into software. They tried to beat the rapidly growing expense of software by implementing more and more software functions in hardware. RISC began in 1975 at IBM. Now I'll jump to the most interesting part where they say the IBM RT PC workstation announced early in 1986 took up the RISC baton. It is a direct offshoot of the 801, another IBM fellow, G. Glenn Henry, who had previously worked on the System 38, was a guiding force behind the RT. The IRT's foundation is a microprocessor called the Research Slash Office Products Division Microprocessor and a companion memory management chip. The ROMP works with standard memory, 150 nanosecond, 256k byte DRAM. It has a very fast memory bus and can transfer one word of data and one address every machine cycle, which apparently is 170 nanoseconds. The bus has 32 lines that function as address lines during half of the cycle and as data during the other half. So here in figure one, you can see the IBM RT PC processor board block diagram. So pause here if you'd like to take a better look at it. The ROMP has 118 instructions, less than half the number of the DEC VAX 11 forward slash 780. The computer most often used today as a standard for speed and an example of CISC architecture. Okay, and I put the year right there to remind you we're talking about 1987. Philip goes on to say that, however, is nearly three times as many instructions found in other RISC designs. That midpoint status, along with the fact that instead of a single instruction format, the ROMP has seven different formats, leads some RISC proponents to say that the RT isn't a true RISC machine. Still it has many of the elements of a RISC machine, and until other RISC micros appear, the RT's commercial success or failure might represent the success or failure of the RISC concepts to the buying public. So now we move to the section titled Risk Defined. Risk is more than just a small instruction set. David Patterson, a professor at the University of Berkeley, whose group first coined the term, says that the definition of risk is a matter of constant debate in the computer architecture community. However, there are a few points that are commonly accepted. First, a risk machine must execute one instruction each clock cycle. Traces of a computer program consistently shows that the most heavily used instructions are the primitives. With proper design, engineers can write these to run in a single clock cycle. That simplifies pipelining, interrupts, and a host of other microprocessor design attributes. Sticking to primitives, however, requires compilers to use more software subroutines for complex procedures. A major argument against risk has been that the processors will need to use so many more of the simple instructions in the place of powerful, complex instructions, that the increase in path length, so that's the number of instructions to get the job done, will negate the advantage of running each instruction faster. Okay, I'll jump down to the second point that everyone seems to agree with, and that is that a risk machine must use a fixed format for the instructions. 
Doing so makes decoding simple. Assigning each field to a particular function allows hardwiring of the instructions, and avoiding microcode adds more speed. Only 6 to 10% of the chip area of the Berkeley RISC 1 and 2 chips was devoted to control functions, while 50% to 60% of the total chip area in A68000 or Z8000 is the control section. Now third, RISC machines stick to a load slash store architecture. That means the only instructions that deal with memory are simple load or store instructions. All other manipulations take place inside the microprocessor registers. So that's fascinating. A big difference between these two types of machines is where data manipulation happens. Registers versus memory. This arrangement simplifies addressing and makes it easier to restart instructions for exception conditions. It also requires a large number of on-chip registers, a common feature of RISC chips, and one that some detractors claim is the main reason for improved performance. Okay, sure, so more registers, greater performance. What's the difference between cache and registers? Well, finally, they say RISC machines require more compile time effort than CISC machines. Because of RISC's uh, relatively few instructions and addressing modes, more effort should go into compilers that can order the primitive instructions in the most efficient manner. Tailoring the instruction sequences to the exact requirements of the high-level language chosen. All right, I'm going to skip this section that talks about uh, the Berkeley team creating SOAR, which stood for small talk on a risk. I mean, it is interesting that project resulted in a risk chip that was dedicated to running small talk. And then later in the article, they talk about another co uh, project called SPUR, which stood for symbolic processing using risks. Here they're conducting research on parallel processing, and uh, here they focused on using LISP. But I want to jump down to this section where AMD gets involved. Here the article talks about them cooking up two families of uh, VLSI chips. The bipolar AM29300 and the CMOS AM39300. Here I'll show you the AMD block diagram with the instruction register at the top here. If I zoom out, it becomes harder to read, but you're not missing much down here after the address bus. I provide the link for you to go here if you'd like, right down here at the bottom. After this AMD section, they have a section titled the Stanford Camp, where Professor John Hennessy was one of the early academic stewards of uh, RISC. Patterson's team customized its chip to symbolic processing languages such as Smalltalk and Lisp. The Stanford team, according to Hennessy, went for raw speed. So their project was named MIPS-XMP. It produced a 100% fully functional 32-bit microprocessor chip on the first fabrication round. So the chip was designed to run at a 20 MIPS peak, and the Stanford team currently has parts that work at 17 MIPS. Of the 125,000 transistors on the chip, only 25 to 30,000 are non-memory functions. The rest include a big on-chip cache and 32 general purpose registers. Next up is the HP spectrum. So MIPS and Hewlett Packard made parallel efforts in studying instruction use in programming. HP has chosen an architecture that it calls Beyond Risk to be the foundation for all its new generation computers. The spectrum systems are overdue with a reported software problem holding them up long enough to embarrass HP. But they promise great speed and compatibility with their popular predecessor, uh, the HP 3000 mini computer. So although the Spectrum chips will appear in workstations, HP has given most of the attention to their use in mini computers. Okay, and now we're to my favorite section called an ARM for AI. And for anybody who doesn't know, ARM stands for Acorn Risk Machine. At the time of this recording, we're in the year 2023, and that means NVIDIA has already failed to purchase ARM. Though they tried, government regulations stopped them. Back then, at the time of this article, they were uh, Britain's leading personal computer makers. 
And at this time, they are a subsidiary of Olivetti. The company wanted a new processor for AI applications involved with Britain's fifth generation computing project, Alvi. What Roger Wilson, Acorn's senior software designer, wanted was a 32-bit microprocessor with some of the advantages of the 6502 from Moss technology. What a great combination of terms in this article at this point, talking about AI and then 6502, which in the movie Terminator, you can see is the assembly code that was used uh, to write the Terminator. Write or create, however you want to view that. But back to the article, they say that specifically the reason for him wanting 6502 type advantages, that is, is because it meant good interrupt handling ability. Wilson felt that many 16 and 32-bit chips lagged behind the 6502 in interrupt handling. In 1983, he began looking for new designs. The work on risk caught his attention, and over the next 18 months, a four-man design team from Acorn used software tools from VLSI Technology Inc. to structure a single 25,000 transistor chip that comprised a full 32-bit microprocessor dubbed the ARM. The chip is already available on evaluation boards and will eventually form the basis of a new family of Acorn products. So the rest of the article here just goes into the details about how great the ARM chips are. But I wanted to show you the uh, block diagram. Well, the block and position diagram. To give you time to pause, I'm just going to read the boxes. We got data control, priority control, bit counter, condition sequencer, trap control, instruction skip. So it looks like this is the magic behind ARM chips. The very last section of the article is titled High Native Instruction Rates Win. The risk idea has had a huge impact on computer architecture. Even designers who aren't embracing it are borrowing from it. With a raft of new commercial pure and not so pure risk products appearing from the micro to the super mini level, there's no doubt that risk has outgrown the stage of academic exercise. At the same time, universities continue to explore the risk idea, particularly with processors aimed at symbolic processing. How well the eyebrows raising instruction rates of these new simplified chips will translate into practical processing power and commercial success is not certain. Well, I guess it's certain for us here in 2023. Now, referring to the flagship of digital equipment's mini computer line as a well-known standard, Patterson bluntly states, I think in the next few years, a lot of companies will come out with inexpensive risk machines that will be faster than DEX 8600. He continues, I'd say if you were going to design a brand new instruction set today, you'd have to be real stubborn not to employ some of the risk ideas. And that's the end of the article. The very next one is on the same topic, just written by someone else this time. Thomas Johnson, maybe I'll do a video on this. Thanks for watching.